Hello lovely people, how are you? Are you well? I do hope so. Um, I'm continuing from the previous video when I was sowing garlic and broad beans. I haven't done the broad beans direct in the bed yet, but the ones in cells are all wrapped into, and actually I've decided to put them in the cold frame after all, not because of warmth protection, what have you, but because we are due another week of really heavy rain. And I just don't want the seeds to get waterlogged and rot. Um, obviously the ones I'm sowing direct, they're going to get quite wet, but because they, they'll be in the bed, that water can drain to some extent. So the main job now, because I haven't done the broad beans direct in the bed, is to start taking out the tomatoes. My goodness, middle of October. And it's sort of, it's the beginning of the big autumn clear up. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get outside. Oh, cause the other thing I want to do today is nets off all the brassicas and get all my brassicas staked. The steaks I want for the brassicas are currently holding tomatoes up. So it's that thing of, right, tomatoes first, so I can use that bed for broad beans and the tomato steaks for other things. Can you hear above? We've had quite a few planes over in the last half an hour, but they're all like biplanes, oldish planes. I don't know if there's an air show going on somewhere. I wouldn't have thought so at this time of year. And also those kind of events, are they still happening? Anyway, so excuse the noise of the circling biplanes and uh, let's crack into these tomatoes. Just before I get stuck into my tomatoes, I want to show you Mark and Mon's brassica bed because I keep talking about it and it really is lovely so let me just bring it's not actually in fairness it's not looking at its best Mark has just said that to me because they have been scoffing from it but look I just love this mixture of colour and textures so here I know what most of them are but I'm going to ask Mark in a sec this is calibres you can see oh where's my finger gone just down there another head forming gorgeous we all know our calibres and then our beautiful curly kale gorgeous 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 and then some cavolo nero a nice nice little um cage system you can see it's these you get these sort of like attachment things and you can slot any of your old bamboos into them fab but then so mark what is this next one because this is one that's really uh, crazy looking it's kale kx1 <laughs> say again kale KX1. It looked good on the seed pack. <laughs> it's crazy. So it's like it's green. The underneath side of the leaf is green, and then the top is purple. But look at the edges. How does it taste? I uh, like kale. <laughs> <laughs> no, delicious. We had it roasted last night. So basically, just grow it if you like kale, but actually grow it because it's gorgeous. And then look at these sprouts. Look at the colours. This is my favourite site in the garden, actually, is green leaves with pinky red ribs. Beautiful. You guys have done so well in your first full year on the plot. It's all, you've got it all now sort of organised, haven't you? So, for instance, this is going to be a path. So it's freshly seeded, hence the hoop and net over the seed to keep the boides off. That bird has been massively productive all summer. And what have you just planted? Is it frise? Uh, so we've got uh, frise lettuce, radicchios, and then we've got shallots and garlic. Oh, fantastic. Just um, before you get to our celeriac. Oh, yeah. I can't walk on that path to show you, but in there, some beautiful celeriacs. And they're quite a good size, aren't they? Are they a little bit bigger than our pools? Look a little bit bigger than <laughs> and then you've got your perma fruit bed so strawberries and i mean look this is a rhubarb jungle are you going to keep all this rhubarb yes so we've got one really large there's bar. one there there's four the, oh my goodness but they were all here already um, beautiful but one's really large so we assume that will die at some stage so yeah some did you not transplant any of them into this bed or were they yeah, all so the big one was already here okay and then the and others the used others were around the plot. Dug out and moved sort of around. And then this has been your sort of salads and leaves and beans. And look at these beetroot. I can't remember the name of these either. The cylindrical ones. Alto. 
outer, which are really great for peeling. <laughs> Easier than uh, round ones. I'm not even going to talk about your carrots. Look at them, they're jumping out. Yeah, they've been attacked by the slugs. <clears throat> oh, Keldermarsh, but there'll be something on there. No, there are. We've, and they're so sweet. I think carrots are one of the big surprises. The difference between shop board oh and undoubtedly yeah. you can't you can't beat it can you and then your little bits of oh the tomatoes are going so you're doing the same job as me today yep. getting tomatoes, tomatoes out. out look at those pretty chi oh i want to show you this chili mark's going to have to keep ahead of me or behind me or oh. something because i think i'm i don't think i've got covid lurgy but i've definitely got some kind of lurgy i just want to show you these chilies look isn't that gorgeous which one's this again uh i can't remember but oh it's not was it, it no it's this one isn't it no, that blue green, the green one is the one that came um from a card oh there you go <laughs> get your ricardo orders so it's and it's definitely a chili it's definitely a chili i've just saved some seeds and planted it and, and is it and it's the red one that blew your head off and the red ones are um cayenne and they're rather hot <laughs> rather you than me and then bits and bobs of herbs and very importantly for any allotment garden oh, table and chairs and then what i love is what they've done is uh, just all flowers let me take you this way because it's supposed to be viewed oh sunnies are over crashing around but all flowers in this top bed and the sunnies were sort of arranged well <laughs> they were supposed to be arranged by height weren't they, they were. Quite work. There are a couple of tall ones at the back, but it's so lovely to have this on the main path because then all of us walking down the path get to enjoy all of this. Oh, thanks for letting us have a nosy. You know what I'm doing though, don't you? Just putting off the <laughs> I'm avoiding my own work. Oh my goodness. Oh, and also I want to point out I'll come this way. Mark's got some spare seedlings I'm going to have a go with. Some spare frisée, great, but this is what I'm really, really interested in. It's apparently an overwintering, <clears throat> an overwintering type of fennel. It's called, I can read the label, Mont Blanc. Now, I can't imagine having fennel over winter, but, and these are all, are these all spare in this tray? Yep. Fantastic, because it's not been the best fennel year for me ever. So, um, well, that was one of our mistakes. We planted um, fennel that didn't actually produce a bulb. <laughs> what herb fennel? Yeah, but that's that's nice for tea. And then, um, are these your spare? Um, so you can have half of them. Oh, look at that! Isn't that gorgeous? That's what I love about gardening communally. Get someone else's leftovers. Fab. Right, Mark. I am going to stop delaying my work. I'm going to go and do some work. Ooh, boring. I have to just think of the end result. The end result will be worth it. Thanks, See lovely. You. See you later. Bye. Don't you just love having a nosy at someone else's garden? <laughs> I think they've done great. They've done an absolutely fab job in a year. Been so productive. Not only have they been productive, they've enjoyed it. It's brilliant. Good neighbours. Especially if I'm getting some free seedlings. Oh my goodness. So, yes, time for the tomatoes to come out. My goodness, it's... I keep having to remind myself that it's just October. I mean, it's that it's already October. Um, and previously, I get to this... Hang on a sec, let's have that away. Previously, I get to this point in the year, chopping the tomatoes down, and I kind of feel a bit sad. I suppose it's that whole letting go of summer thing. But you know what, this year, I'm not sad. I'm not in the least bit sad because I've had a fantastic harvest. If you remember, I took a load of green ones home about a week ago. Was it a week ago, maybe? Um, some of them are ripening. Yay! So yeah, it's um, I have I have no feeling of melancholia today because a I've had a great harvest and b I'm doing this because I'm about to plant something else. Yay! Now what I do want to do, what I want to show you, I'm going to show you this 
for the sake of our newbies. Oh, I forgot, I haven't kind of caught up with you all on that, have I? But, um, hang on a sec. That for so many folk this year, this is their first go at having a veg garden. I think there was definitely that kind of carpe diem feeling as we went into lockdown of, okay, if I'm gonna be at home all day, um, you know, even for those who are working from home, but maybe more so people who don't normally work but would be out and about during the day, have sort of said to themselves, I've got that bit of the garden, why don't I turn it into a vegetable garden? So I hope you all had a great first veg growing year. Yay! I hope you've enjoyed some really lovely harvest, but more than anything, I hope that you've been bitten by the bug and that you'll continue next year. I mean, goodness knows what's going to be happening next year. Anyway, so specifically for the newbies, what I wanted to show you, if you remember way back to the beginning of June, when I was planting the tomatoes, I always plant my tomatoes a bit deeper, partly because they get so leggy because I grow them, bring them on indoors where they lack light, but it's also to help them with developing their roots. And I can show you now exactly what I mean. So, Here's my tomato plant. That is where the surface of the soil was. Down here, this is the little bit of root that had developed in the pot as I was bringing them on at home. It's really hard to see in this light today, isn't it? But all of this, all of these roots, these developed from the stem that was buried. So all these little fibrous roots, these are great for taking up a bit of water, taking up nutrients. And you can see this year, we do have some, I've left half of them down there, we do have some considerably longer roots this year. You can tell that was a drought year, can't you? Because those roots have gone down and down and down in the desperate search for some water. But yeah, that's why I plant my tomato plants deeper. Gives them a bit of stability, but also, like I said, that whole section of stem that's below the surface of the soil will develop more roots. More roots equals more water and nutrient take up. It's a win, 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 win. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's not the beginning of the end, it's the beginning of the next phase for the garden. It will probably take me, <laughs> in total, probably the best part of two days to get all my structures down, all the plants that are still clinging to them to be chopped up, get all my um, stakes and sticks and everything else neatly stashed away for the winter. I don't want to leave bean poles in the ground over winter because they'll get so wet they'll rot. People quite often ask me about why don't I leave all my bean arches up to save me having to build them from scratch again next year. Well that's the reason. If I leave them all in the ground I and mean, you can see on this one you can see how wet it's been in the ground. Goodness I didn't get that in very far did I? Maybe eight inches <laughs> with <laughs> with the best part of seven and a half feet sticking out. But yeah, you know, if I leave them in over winter, rot, 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 rot. So, this is going to take me a while. So for now, I'm gonna put you all back in the shed. You can all have a little coat, you can have a nap. Have a nap in the shed. The temperature is warming up. There's tons of blankets and cushions in there. Why don't you all go in there, get yourselves comfy, have some cake and tea, and I'll catch up with you when these two, I'm just doing these two rows today of the Gardener's Delight. The other two rows, they can wait. I've got more pressing things to do. See you in a minute. Nearly done. Just doing the last of the rooty bits. But goodness, look. Oh. Doesn't it look bare? Oh my goodness. Not for too much longer. I've got to say, 
even though it's we're getting towards later autumn the sun is so much lower in the sky it's it's about one o'clock the sun is kind of where it would be at sort of four o'clock in the summer so it's low it's not as strong but oh there's some really beautiful warmth in it these are perfect perfect days for being in the garden now having done all this oh i should just say as well the great thing about not having blight this year means that from these two rows of gardener's delight that have come out i've got a whole barrow full of compost or the makings of compost when we have blight we've got a rule on our site that blighted plants need to be either burnt on the spot well on our burn pile if we're having a burning day which we haven't this year and i don't think we will be either just because of sort of air quality and trying to look after people's lungs at this time just a step here for a bit of light um so yes we either have to get them off site and burnt i mean burnt on site or we have to remove them from site but no blight means a load of compost. Now at the moment, I don't have an empty bed to put it all on. So I'm just going to stick it in the compost bin for now, so it's out of the way. Um, hey Pip! You all right, lovely? People are turning up now, it's sunny. Um, yeah, just so it's out of the way for now. And then over the next few days as I clear beds, just chuck it all on, crop and drop thing is if I if I was taking out the other two rows today I'd put it all on that bed because it's not going to be in use but I'm not going to do that bed today I've got other things to do hmm let's see how my energy goes because it is a bit flagging if I've got the energy maybe I'll do it right tomato bed empty might oh I need to get my planks and my rocks off might give it a bit of a tickle see how it is but otherwise get it ready for the broad beans but before I do that, I want to do something that's more fun. <laughs> I mean, planting is fun, of course. Of course it is. But having now just done quite a long, boring job, I want to have a bit of fun. I'm going to start getting the nets off all my brassicas because there are some of them, mostly the, the two lots, so four rows of the teeny tiny seedlings I put in at three four five four five weeks ago now see how they're getting on i know i've lost two but otherwise come on let's get the nets off and see what's been going on underneath them all this time Now, I think these two rows, <laughs> I think, are calabrese. So, what some folk call broccoli with the, with the sort of main central head. So that was the one I knew I'd lost early on. Oh, you look all right. You look all right. You can see though the, um, I'll just pull them all gently out. All this mulch I put down which came straight out of the compost bin. It's sprouting and it looks, I think it's all calendula flowers. Okay, that one struggling a bit. Oh, bricks away. And that one has got quite big. It's been competing with the calendula, I think. And there's another little teeny tiny scrappy one on the end. The thing about brassicas, the, the leaves are so beautiful to eat at any stage. So even if you have them as a little tiny baby plant, gorgeous, ah, yeah, lost one there. But actually, let's see now, so that's one, two, three definite losses and one really tiny scrappy struggler but like I say I think you know considering 
<coughs> how late they've gone in and how oh did you see, did you see that little black and white cat run across that's a little coco Kay's adopted kitty sweet thing uh yeah i'm quite pleased with that okay on to the uh row of cabbages right now these are two rows of cabbages <laughs> i can't remember which ones oh that was a lovely little interruption Kay's um, adopted these two kittens. She was fostering, I think it was a litter of seven. She fosters for one of these cat um, charities. Fell in love, kept two of them, and uh, apparently, oh, blah, they're a bit lazy indoors. <laughs> so, she brings them out for a walk in the gardens. She sort of walks up and down the central path and they follow and bounce around. Right then, so some look better than others. And I think I've got these um, all sorts of nasturtiums coming up. But just while the uh, just while the plants are getting established, I'm going to have them out. Yeah, that's very. I don't know if you can see it, very pathetic one there. Um, two that aren't looking brilliant. So three that aren't looking brilliant, but no losses. Yay! So soon it'll be time for me to get some stakes in with these so they don't get, they hate wind rock, but also I just, I just don't want them to get mashed and blown onto the paths. What else shall I, oh, I'm not sure. Do you know what? Let me get the rest of the nets off in my own time and then I'll give you a quick look because I think, I think I've spotted something in the cauliflower bed. One of the reasons I like to get the nets off is, but well, there's many reasons. Firstly, I like to see my veggies, not white plastic nets. So yay for being able to see them. But also it means it just makes harvesting so much more easy. Oh, do you remember about three or four weeks ago, I put in these little Cavallo stragglers. Those two haven't been happy. Those two are okay, they'll come to something. Yeah, it makes harvesting so much easier. Um, it makes weeding so much easier. Actually, it's not too bad in terms of weeds because, well, because I just pack, I pack my plants in. Oh, let's see how the carrots are doing. <laughs> Having looked at Mark's this morning, I might stop. Whoop, la, there go my glasses. I might start pulling a couple. But anyway, yes, back to this whole thing of enjoying being able to see them and harvest that's all the purple sprouting broccoli out of the nets now but look you can see look at the jaunty angle of this one already yep the stakes need to go in but what i want to show you is let's tiptoe past past the parsnips this top bed so on this side it's all the curly kale had some lovely harvests from that already and I'll certainly be having more especially now that I don't have to faff with the netting this is what I'm excited about having never grown collies before look little curd starting I need to fold the top over to keep the sun off and then there's another one it's quite big but I think the sun has got to it because it's looking a bit yellow but never mind, I should be having that out and having that for my tea tonight. Hurrah! But my goodness, I must have a caterpillar in here somewhere. Look at the state of the leaves. Yeah, there's been a lot of nibbling going on. Oh, there go my glass again. Hello, culprits. Yes, you are probably going to be coming off and going on the bird table. Right, but before I do any of that, what am I doing today? Let's just have a little remember. Ah, yes. Get all the, the various brassicas staked just so they don't get knocked about in the wind. 
and um, after that, afternoon, uh, yeah, but before that, should I say, I'm going to go on with this bed where, oh look, where the tomatoes were, gosh, it does look bad, doesn't it? So, like I said, I'm just going to give the soil a bit of a tickle, I want to incorporate some chicken manure and some of the compost that's on top, I want to just get that incorporated a bit before I do some direct sowing of the broad beans as my control group for my experiment. Oh, let me show you, let's come this way. All this material needs to be taken out and chopped. There's a lot to do at this time of year, but it's all great stuff. Um, coming around the back here, need to make space for the Taunton Dean. Oh, the rosemary. Look at the size of it again, it's like a tree again. I need to do a big cut and harvest of that. But in the meantime, there are my uh, 60 broad bean seeds, which have a bit of chilli in each sowing pocket and the two wrapped all around them to hopefully thwart the mice. Right, let's get on. By the way, my orange trog, I'm loving it, using it every visit. I still don't know who it's from. I would love to know because I do love having a trog with handles once more. Right, enough of that Vivi. Do some bed prep. Oh, just take this. Oh, don't trip over Vivi. Just take this in for a moment. Seeing the green of brassicas instead of the white of nets. That's a very happy sight, isn't it? Right, onwards. Amazingly, I've got enough seed to do two rows direct. So I am going to experiment a bit in terms of control, control group. So this first row here is not gonna have any tool, but half of it is going to have a little bit of chilli over each seed. Obviously these are, oh, that was quite a lot of chilli. Obviously these are all going to get covered up in a second. So hopefully that's a put off. So in, the, in this front row, half with chilli, half without, and no tool. No, no tool in this tool bag. Then in the second row, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Again, half have got chili, half haven't. And I'm going to get this off. I'm not quite sure yet how I'm going to affix it. Let me just weigh that down. But the idea will be put this across the top to try and deter the mice as well, way down either side. So, <laughs> we'll see. Right, let's get them all covered. I've put little markers, oh, oh my knees are screwed today. I've put little markers halfway down each row to say no chilli, which is up that way a bit. Oh, well, in terms of bed prep, I have put chicken pe manure pellets on here. Oh, excuse me, huffing and puffing and groaning. My knees are really bad suddenly. Um, I've put chicken manure on here, and then literally all I've done with the fork is just in the top couple of inches or so, I've just kind of done a sort of a flicking action just to incorporate it a bit. So there's bits of tomato roots down here, there's bits of cardboard, there's all sorts. The more the merrier. And then, oh, I think after this I might have to call it quits today. Then once they're all in and tucked away, I'll put nets, my net tunnels over them. Again, as a sort of a, a fox cat scrabbling digging prevention i've just covered that row up i don't know where to put the tool i'll figure it out oh come on old lady get on with it 
Oh, well, I think that's probably the best I can do. So that's the tool underneath, all the way up through the middle, weighed down by planks and bricks, etc. Hmm, let's see. Let's see if a combination of tool and chili works, or tool on its own. Who knows, maybe at the top end on this side, hey Rosie, chili alone will work. I will keep you posted. Of course, what this means is, um, with having this tool on, I will have to keep a close eye on it because the whole point of doing this, as I was saying in the other video, is to just get the, the, the seed to germination stage before the mice nick them. So once they've germinated, great, it's done the job. But I will have to make sure to keep an eye on it so I lift the tool off and not crush the emerging seedlings and likewise for the ones in the cold frame. Good, right, let's get these nets on. Goodness me, it never looks like much work, does it? Uh, but it's amazing how the day disappears. I don't know if you can tell, mm, probably not, but it's getting a bit dark. <laughs> It's not dark as in six o'clock. I think it's about four o'clock. But yeah, the sun is dipping quickly. It's getting a bit cooler again. And the thing is, my body is objecting. My knees are hurting. I definitely feel like I've, I've got something, you know, a cold or something. So I'm gonna be sensible and call it a day. Um, oh, um, but actually that's great that's that's kind of like the longest session i've had in the garden for ages it's always kind of a bit of a sort of test of fitness almost isn't it so on the one hand it sort of feels like oh i've not really done much today have i but two things there's probably more one i've had a lovely day when the sun has been out it's been beautiful and warm and even when the sun's been behind clouds there's a lovely tranquil air um, today. I've seen pot neighbours. It was odd, people seem to come in the latter half of the day today. I normally see folk in the morning. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I've had some lovely chats, that's great. I've played with the new kittens. That's really great. One of them is still in my garden. I'm going to have to try and sort of guide her back to Kay's shortly. So yeah, it's been lovely from that point of view. But the main thing is, I've sown more seeds, bulbs, whatever today. My garlic is in, my broad beans are in. It's the next lot of food to come. Isn't that one? It's all, oh, it's always so wonderful. To plant something is to, you know, it's to have optimism, it's to dream of tomorrow. It's great. And, you know, the soil at the moment has been lovely to work. I'm trying at the moment to, be, to, I do want to wrap the garden up a bit more quickly this year. I left it really late last year, so we'd had a lot of rain already. And by the time I was taking structures and stuff down, a lot of the material was brown. So I'm trying to create as much green stuff as I can, because I've always got brown in terms of the cardboard. So things like all those tomatoes today, it's all going to add and make great material to cover the beds with which is going to start really soon so yes although you know on the one hand it doesn't feel like I've done much today I've done really important stuff I've sown my next crops I've spent time with beautiful people I've started the tidy up oh, talking of tidying up oh my goodness the tip outside the shed I've got stuff everywhere all the nets oh yeah of course the brassicas Oh, I mustn't forget my cauliflower. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of clearing up to do. There's not much space in the shed because you can't see, but Marmalade Boy is curled up having a lovely, cosy sleep. What a sweetheart. I made up for my missed day yesterday by giving him a lot of cuddles today. A lot. Honestly, the cats have been so distracting today, but what a gorgeous distraction right that's enough shut up baby get tidying there's a lot to tidy um when will i see you next what will i be doing i will see you soon i think um yeah i think it's going to be time to start the big autumn clear up can't wait can't wait 
first of all though an Epsom salts bath for these knees or oh, and because I need to harvest that rosemary anyway or oh, have I got a bit at home I like to use a bit of crushed rosemary in a little bag um, to hang in the bath that's really soothing on joints too so I might harvest a bit of fresh rosemary for my bath tonight rather than using the dried I've already got you don't need to know all this uh, I'm in chatty mode anyway right I will see you again really soon but until then please look after yourselves look after each other and really happy sowing and planting to those of you who like me at this time of year in our mild climate can get the next new crop into the ground have fun doing it bye for now